so avian mycoplasmosis is an extremely important uh, disease in economically in the worldwide poultry industry. And there are several different control or in intervention methods that are involved. And uh, which methods you use really depend a lot on what country you're in, uh, what your goal is, what your focus is. So for example, in the US, the focus really has been on eradication of mycoplasma to a large extent. The broiler breeder type industry in particular has been working for decades to try to uh, eradicate uh, mycoplasma and they have actually done a pretty good job in the US. Uh, the commercial layer <laughs> type industry uh, still has its challenges with avian mycoplasma occasionally and has to have slightly different control methods and that's where a lot of the vaccines are used. Uh, the primer breeders, all of the genetic stock, they have done a fantastic job of cleaning up uh, all of their lines. And uh, that's important because avian mycoplasmosis is transmitted vertically through the egg as well as horizontally. So you really need to have clean breeding stock uh, in order to have a good solid control program for avian mycoplasma. So the different tools, of course, as I said, the U.S. has been in, on an eradication type approach for several decades. But there are other countries where the prevalence of mycoplasma is much higher. And in that instance, uh, you can't do the same type of approach. Because in eradication approach, you need to have a pretty low incidence of disease. And what you do is test, of course, and eliminate anything that is positive uh, so that it is not a source of infection for the rest of the industry. Uh, if you have a very high prevalence, you can't do that. <laughs> so what they are doing instead is using vaccinations and medication. And there's several different vaccines that have been around for quite a long time to control avian mycoplasma. Uh, they are all slightly different. Uh, they're not all equally safe and they're not all equally efficacious. Uh, so there has to be some thought in terms of which vaccine you use in which particular situation. Prevention of infection is the best. The problem is uh, in countries where you have a very high prevalence and they're not able to prevent infection uh, through biosecurity and other means just because the poultry production is so intensive. And in that case, it may be better to vaccinate them instead of trying to uh, keep them mycoplasma free. Diagnostics are very important to coming up with an effective plan and making sure that your plan is working. And if it's not, you can make changes. So you have, uh, you're trying to use one vaccine and you find out that it is not efficacious enough for your situation, so you switch to another vaccine or you add a second vaccination. There are many diagnostics that have been around for a long time. Uh, some of them are very simple and very uh, low-tech type things. Uh, the serum plate agglutination test uh, really was a foundation um, that was used to eradicate mycoplasma in the U.S. in the 19... 50s, 1960s. And it still uh, is a good test. It's still available. It worked very well. Uh, but there are problems with that particular test. Uh, there are several ELISAs available as well. And then uh, PCR, of course, is the latest thing that we've been doing um, quite often. Uh, there's been PCR around for mycoplasma since the 90s. Uh, but in, now, in the last 10-15 uh, years, we also have real-time PCRs available, and now we are starting to develop uh, shrine-specific uh, real-time PCRs as well. And the advantage of some of these vaccine strain-specific PCRs is that they can specifically detect the vaccine and allow you to have a higher level in terms of diagnos diagnostics and what is going on in your farm. Especially once you start using the vaccine, a lot of the other diagnostics just tell you that you are positive, that you have mycoplasma. But with this uh, strain-specific PCR, you can specifically identify that I have vaccine or I don't have vaccine, and you can see if there's a problem there. If you are having wild-type uh, strain infection on top of your vaccine, for example. So another technique that we have been also looking at developing is next generation sequencing. So with next generation sequencing, we are able to rapidly sequence the entire genome of mycoplasma, but also other respiratory pathogens. And we can do that directly from uh, tracheal swabs and other samples uh, without having to isolate or culture the organism. So we are able to look at much more data uh, much more quickly. And because we're looking at the entire 
entire genome, we have much more information than we would have with uh, short pieces of DNA. So we are able to identify uh, key factors that will be important to the veterinarians and the producers, things like whether there is antibiotic resistance. Uh, we'll be looking for virulence factors, so we're able to actually come up with uh, actionable data for the practitioners. Hopefully, uh, some of these new, new techniques will give us uh, more information and uh, fast information in terms of uh, what is going on in the flocks and give the veterinarians and the producers and the farmers more information so that they can better control mycoplasma in the long term. Thank you.